Second Chronicles, chapter 7. Begin to read from verse 12. Second Chronicles, chapter 7. Begin to read from verse 12. If you have your uh, sermon notes at the back, especially my confirmation class, you must record the sermon. You must record the sermon. Hear the words of God. Second Chronicles chapter 7, beginning to read from verse 12. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to the bar of the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wickedness. Then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and will heal them. Oh, we need such a word today. Oh, we need such a word today. In my people, who are called by my name, we claim that the Bahamas is a Christian nation. So we are called by God's name because we are his children. We are his heirs. And if we will humble ourselves and get off this high horse, treat people all kind of way, because we got a couple of dollars, but we got no position. And pray and seek my face, meaning we got to go back to God. We gotta go back to God. We are straight too far. Switch, rich and switch. Get rich and we switch. Forget from whence we came. We turn from the wickedness. Then will I hear from heaven. Then will I hear from heaven. And I will feel the Lest we forget, lest we forget, I speak to the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Solomon had completed the temple, and for 23 days, he celebrated the Feast of Dedication. That must have been some celebration there. Eh? 23 days. He celebrated the dedication. At the end of the celebrations, the Lord appeared unto Solomon, assuring him that his prayers were heard. Anybody here this morning would love to know that their prayers are heard? Even when they come through here, but they still got a hold of it. Assuring him that their, his prayers were heard. And that the chosen temple was God's place for sacrifice. You see, in chapter 7 and verse 12, we realize that God made a promise to Solomon. And he made his promise by first showing Solomon who he is. Not who he was, because he is still sovereign. Eh? Who he is. I am the Lord your God. Yeah. I can shut up heaven yeah. and the rain can't fall. Yeah. I can send locusts yeah. and devour. Yeah. I can send pestilence yeah. because I am God. Yeah. And so Christ the King, Bahamalan, thou shalt have, come on confirmation class, thou shalt have no other God but me. Thou shalt not bow down to them, let's get the second commandment. No, worship them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a shadow. I share my glory with no man. See, when 
when we start worshiping people, when we start worshiping things, and we forget, we forget who gave us these things, then we're looking for trouble. And this is the word to our Bahamas today. We have gone a whore after other gods, the gods of materialism. How many of you, especially those of us from the island, you may not want to believe it, or you may not want to say so. But I can remember when, and, uh, around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, you take short, somebody got to send by the file, too, because you're too scared to go to the rear. To the outside toilet. Oh, I see. You want to go that far? You want to be flashing on your life? <laughs> No, we have to hit the outside toilet. And on a sad day, Mama Bart, you had to scrub their seat, you had to scrub, in fact, you're going to eat, eat food off the, off the, off the floor. We were so clean. Amen? Amen? But I'm just bringing you back a little bit to let you see where we have come from. Because you see, too often we forget. And that is why the first lesson from Deuteronomy is so important for us this morning. Not the power of your heart. Not because you've got an AMA. It's my power and my might that have gotten you this way. So when you get when you get rich, no such. Let the Lord I thank you. Even, even in the midst of the storm, I still thank you. Because you promised me you will never leave me. You promised me you will never forsake me. All I got to do is what? See your face. Boy, sometimes these one that is called really checking for us. But I cannot give up. I come too far. Yesterday, we experienced for the first time in my 34 years in the holy ministry a double funeral. Kevin, the Archdeacon Bay told me the same thing. In his 34 years, he had never done a double funeral. And we did a double funeral yesterday. A mother, and a son. And it, I mean, when I saw that, the pain came to my heart. When I heard the cries from the father who was still alive. The son died a couple of weeks ago, just after, just before your sister, Mama Shirley. And the niece was right here at Christ King that Sunday. Remember when, when, the, when the young people minister? Yes. I dream of a place called the heaven of glory. I want to see who? Jesus. Abraham there and I said, yeah, but I want to see Jesus. And I remember the tears that flowed in this church that Sunday. And among them was the young lady who had come up to receive the body of her brother. And when she went back and watched the body go home, said that before her, her mother just passed. Just passed. And we gonna sit in here this morning and hold grudge. We gonna sit in here this morning and round base people. We gonna sit in here this morning and quarrel because Kevin, come, it is your thing, it's no Anglican, then let Anglican get you to heaven. Let Anglican get you to heaven. You got to know Jesus Christ. That's the only way to heaven. Because why? When we forget this awesome God who has brought us thus far, we look at the trouble. Because form and fashion and tradition cannot get you there. They got to know Jesus Christ. So I go back to Mama Faith's widow. Romans 10, 9 and 10. 
But thou shalt confess to thy mouth the Lord Jesus and do what? Believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. That's the only way. This morning we're gonna we're gonna bring these little ones into the fellowship of Christ Church. Their parents and godparents are stand in the gap for them. But one day they got to stand for themselves. And when they stand for themselves in confirmation, the first question the bishop will ask you, did or do you, do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I tell you again, in church world, very much a target because it is a personal commitment to Jesus Christ. But we got a challenge. And so this morning, we are called to seek God's face. We are called to turn. That means it's a call to repentance. We are called to come back to our first love. As we go forward, we recognize that this call to repentance must be a humble call. A humble call. He said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. Because you see, too many people, especially those who got a little bit of power, help me out, who got a little bit of power, they think they run the things. But they forget the same God who put them there. It's the same God who can take them down. And this is what we see in our Muhammad land. They move from door to door, knocking on the door, looking for this, looking for that. And once they get inside, they forget. They forget. And I come to these in particular part. I just let you know the truth. That is why we got to seek God's face. For the arm of flesh will always fail. But my God will never fail. He were an Haitian or Jamaican or Texan or Canadian. He looks me on all my faults. Anybody here this morning? And he sees my blood. When I mess up, he ain't gonna put my name, he ain't gonna put me on blast. <laughs> oh, come on, let's go. Yeah, just go over here. Get your free spoon. He ain't gonna put me on blast. Oh, yeah, young people. You know where I'm coming from. I ain't gonna put him on blast. But I better blast and put him on Jesus. Because why? Because why? His arms are always outstretched. To welcome whosoever will they come. Because you don't got no Baptist highway in heaven. You don't got no Anglican run about in heaven. You don't got no Roman Catholic call the sack in heaven. Only the redeemed. Only the redeemed. And so this morning, the invitation to all of us is found in those wonderful words from Isaiah 1. And 18. Come now, let us what reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as they shall be, though they be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. Somebody should give this great and awesome God a praise this morning. Somebody should recognize that even though I mess up, I mess up. I still can come because he's waiting for me. And you see, we want to stay in our mess up. We want to stay in our sin. Let him come. Give me these flimsy excuse. Ah, uh, Kenneth, you know the, the spirit is still in that the flesh is being crop up. Foolishness. We all know that the flesh and the spirit are war. Amen? Because yes. the flesh is an enemy. Yes. The flesh is an enemy. Yes. The world is an enemy. Yes. Satan is an enemy. Yes. So they got to war against the spirit, yes. especially those who are on jump ship. Because when you jump ship, Satan's ship, he's coming back for you a hundred more times. Yes. 
See, as long as you're there, you gotta come for you, okay? You know, I never, but when you drop shit, he gotta come for you. And so, we are called this morning to full repentance. A hundred and eighty degree turn from darkness into light. Oh, what it is to walk in the night. You don't gotta go a little ghost school, brothers. Come on. You don't gotta put another black shirt and black pants and black shoe and black. Oh, Jesus. <laughs>